today I want to just play around with this Derwent drawing pencils, which I haven't had time to do it with, so I thought today I'll just do it together with you. And um, I also will use the black pencil from the Polychromos because it comes to a really hard point and it's great for detailing. So because I'm going to be working with colored pencils for the skin tone, um, I don't think I'll be able to use the usual technique of fine lining um, the contours afterwards. So I think if I will need to do that, I'll probably just use one of the polychromos. If the black is a bit too strong, I might go for one of the dark grays, I think. Um, I've got a light gray here. So I've got a number of colors that I could actually use for lining out, but I'll choose that once we get there. So far, I have just stamped out the face using the FOTD stamp set, which is available on Etsy and on a Create. And I've used the weed color this time, so that's why it looks slightly different to the usual tattered rose. This is a uh, pigmented ink in the sense that it's quite, it's a chalking, so it's going to be quite opaque and it's um, yeah so it, it has a different look to it but i think on camera it picks out probably a little bit better so you can see better by the way i have also done this play with kind of comparing polychromos uh, to drawing pencils and playing around mixing the colors both um, both of the brands colored of the colored pencils and you can see that in the video here I'll link it up so let's start so I'm going to start by picking out colors that I think would be quite nice for for the um, for the skin tone. So I'll just go with a number of colors here. Mm. Okay. I think that should be enough for now. So I will start with the um, darkest color towards the contour of the face. Now the leads on these pencils are really really thick. I haven't sharpened them. When they came they had a little bit of a... Um, they didn't have like this super fine tip and I guess the reason would be because they're just a, a different uh, pencil altogether. I just realized I should have drawn in some sort of, of a scarf or something on her head. Anyways, I'm just going to do it now. And then I think I'll go try this one. Sorry, I, I'm not going to be stopping and telling you every color that I'm using just because it sort of kind of um, slows down the process. And I'd rather be in the process of creating. Okay, so that's about it I think for now like so and then back to the skin tone now that was a bit too orange whichever one was it this one that I was doing yeah so this is too orange which was Sandrine so that's gonna go back and skin tone let's go to Mars orange That's obviously still an orange color, but at least I'm going to. So you need very little. The experience of drawing with these is sort of like as if you're using pastels. That's how much pigment you get from very light pressure, very light touch, just like what would happen with the um, with 
um, pastels. So I'm just thinking of the contour. A bit of makeup skills. Hopefully, will come in now. Okay, brown ochre. Now the key here is for the first layer to use very little pressure so that you can very easily layer the two colors. So I'm going to pull out that orangey color or blend it rather with this so it will kind of neutralize it a little bit more. So that's how I like to start. I like to start on the outskirts of the face and work towards the center. So if I mess up a little bit, I wonder if I can use this. It sort of works well. Sand and rubber e eraser. Cleans up the edge a little bit more. Um, yeah, so I might want to sharpen them to give them a really fine point at some point. But for today, I'm just going to just do that. The other thing I like to do is take more of a kind of like a purpley color. Let's see, this is Mars Violet. And add that under the eye. In, in real life, having sort of darkness under the eyes doesn't really look great. Makes you look a little bit unwell, tired perhaps, but in the illustration world I do love it quite a bit. So I'm going to also warm it up with a touch of yellow ochre, like so. Okay, I think I might try to attempt to go into the light sienna now. So again, over the both of the colors that I already layered, and I'm just going to pull it out towards the center of the face. These are very easy to use for gradient, so from darkest to lightest. I find that with polychromos I can't achieve it as seamlessly. Also I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight like so. And then again blend it out and build up just here where the other two colors are. Gosh, these are a pleasure to work. The only, only uh, complaint or criticism I have for these pencils is the design. I think that pencils look so much prettier when they have the whole color running throughout. I love that about the Holbeins as well. The design, design-wise, Holbein and Polychromos are my favorite ones. They just are gorgeous to look at and I love the gold kind of um, ring at the end. Here the whole of the pencil is sort of a brown color which I'm not too keen on so I wish it was just the exact delicious color that it is of the tip just run through the entire pencil but like I said, that's just sort of preference of, you know, taste preference rather than uh, actual product com complaint or, um, you know, um, uh, unsatisfaction. So I think they are an amazing pencil. I am also going to add a little bit of shadowing here at the chin but I'm not going to use a darker color because that very quickly translate in, translates into sort of beard looking um, addition so I'm just going to use more pressure rather than a different color nose I'm going to add a little line here and then just slowly kind of pulling it in towards the center. Again, keep in mind where you want a highlight to be and keep those areas 
So for instance, I would like a touch of highlight uh, on the nose. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to color in the eyes just to give uh, a little bit of base and then I will go in with more color, maybe a different color even. So more pressure here and then less pressure like that. Okay. Just think ahead in terms of highlights and things like that. Okay. So now I'm going to use the same pencil and just build it up a little bit here and there. So I don't like how the um, the contour looks. It's uh, looking a little bit too sharp here, so I'm going to try my best at blending things out. And let's see. Just a touch of this color, now very lightly blending it out, barely touching, but just taking it outside a little bit of that harsh line. I am doing sort of circular movements here. These pencils go a really long way very quickly, so make sure you stop and have a look whether that's where you want it to go so that you don't overdo it. Okay, so this side is now looking better. It's a lot more smoother. This one I still need to work on. So I think I'm going to go with this darker. And then like that. Okay, now I want to move on to the eyes. Where, where I already layered that purple color, I'm going to go over with Mars Orange. So the purple has given us a good base to work on. I'm going to warm it up with a touch of yellow ochre, yes, just checking the number or the colors, color names, and then now oh, that's gonna go like that. Also going to take a touch of... So now you start to become the makeup artist, so basically you can create um, you can enha enhance the uh, shape of the eye, you can do all sorts of things and just use the stamps as a little helper so that you don't need to start with a blank wide page but you already have a foundation that you laid Mind you, I'm now, I really want to try this pencil at its sharpest end point. So let me just find fabric style. Now I need a really thick one because these are thick. Okay. Now let's see what happens if I have a sharp point. They blend better when they are not sharp but when you need to get a bit of a detail then of course this is looking quite nice mind you I feel like I want to go over this color from the polychromos uh, yes so this is green shadow and it has more of a opaque finish to it and let's see I want a grey there's a grey here but it's not too dark this grey so 
Oh, it still works. That's good. Okay, so that's it. Now kind of the this area is a little bit more finished. Okay, so that's that. Now, what should we do with the eyes? Let me go in with the polychromos now. And actually, I want it to be really, really sharp so that I get the thinnest line possible. Beautiful. So, polychromos are fantastic for detail, and so that's why it depends on what you want from a pencil, you can then, um, you know, work with it really. So I need a dark brown, but a warm color. So I'm gonna go, yeah, so what I'm trying to say is you can work with different brands and there is place for different brands. So for instance, I like combination of both. And then, and then I'm going to, oop. I'm just going to give her a nice eyebrow right here. Like that. So you went from there to there. I'm just going to do one half of the face just to show you where you can take these, um, these stamps. Okie dokie, so and they actually work beautifully with a fine tip because then I can go into the detail really well. So I'm going to sharpen this one as well. And just highlight right above this black line. Oh, never smudge with your finger what I just did. It feels kind of faster to do that with, but you can smudge the pigment really easily. So this um, eraser comes in really handy. So I'm just looking at the eyebrow and kind of seeing where I want it. Just a few more hairs. And if I'm getting a thicker end, I'm just going to, I mean, go as bushy as you want, you know. I'm going to go quite bushy. And I need to correct this little bit here. That's it. Okay. That's my bushy eyebrow. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back in and try to blend a little bit more just here. And also back into this pencil and here. Okay, lip-wise, we do have some interesting colors, not too many. That would be a nice lip color. Yeah, I quite fancy this one. So this is the Ruby Earth. I do need a sharper point to this. And I'm going to follow the stamped line. I don't want there to be an outline with the ink. So I'm just going to go right over it. Like so. And 
I could give her some teeth, but I'm not going to do it today. Instead, what I will do is just add a darker color just to separate the lips a little. And then I'm just going to add this color and then keep a little highlight as well. Like that, and then I'm going to build it up in at the edges here. Okay. So that looks quite pretty. I think I might is that this color? Yeah. I'm just going to try it just to layer it. I'm just reducing the highlight a little bit as well. So that's the lip. And then let's continue a little bit on the eye and I'll call it a day for today. Just, just because I don't want it to be too long. I just wanted to give you an idea. So that's that, and then in terms of the color of the eye, uh, this was a good one, cool tone, is it? Warm and cool gray, yeah. Okay, they sharpen so quickly, it's amazing. I mean, look how thick, how thick the lead, um, lead is incredible there's hardly any wood around it whereas I showed you this before but I'll show it again wood to lead ratio so I'm just gonna go all the way around like so And then use a bit of white just to blend it out a touch. Okay. That's it. And then if I wanted to darken it, I would go with a polychromos. Because they're a lot harder. And then just do like that. So if you more you want more detail, use the combination of them and the polychromas. Yes, I think I will leave it at that and should have given you a good indication. Actually, I do want to add a little bit of something, something. Just going to add a little decoration here. Okay, here we go, so that's that's what you can create. I mean, I like I said, you know, you can spend a lot more time for blending and getting even more out of this, but if I close one side of the face to you, And then show you how we started off. So that's sort of what you can create with these pencils, and they are really super, super fun. All right, thanks for watching, and see you soon.